three speaker. Uh, we have Billy Cerullo of the National Low Income Housing Coalition. We have Dr. Bambi Hayes Brown of Georgia Advancing Communities Together. And we have Pat Frey of the United Way Home for Good uh, working in Muskogee County. So we have local, state, and national partners uh, with a focus on Georgia for this month. And just so our speakers uh, get to know who they're talking to, uh, we'll just do a quick introduction uh, with your name and your location. So I'm Teresa Alamine, and I am the chair of the Advancing Human Rights Committee and the Housing Justice Working Group. So this month, we're focusing in on Georgia. And maybe next month, we'll do Vermont or California or North Carolina. And so I see people are still joining. Uh, so let's just go across uh, the screen a little bit. Uh, so we, if we could do Georgia, and then Gloria McMillan, since you're from the same location. So Georgia, uh, please introduce yourself, your name and your location. Hi there, everybody. I'm from Tucson, as I just, I've just uh, renamed Georgia. myself. Mm -hmm. And I'm a member of the WILP group there. Well, Georgia, for some reason, her audio isn't working, uh, but she's from Tucson, Arizona. Uh, Gloria, would you introduce yourself? Gloria McMillan. Hi, I'm from Tucson, and I'm in the Tucson branch and the Chicago branch that's restarted. Um, we're working on a number of projects. Well, can people hear me? Because I can't hear anyone. Yes. You're George, loud and clear. So. I'm George Friday. I'm from Shelby, North Carolina, in the Southern Piedmont branch. Um, I I can't see myself. George, off. if you could hear me, uh, would you finish doing the check in so I can figure out what's going on with my audio, so okay. that everyone in the meeting, other than uh, the speakers, would check in. Okay. So the speakers know who. Certainly. Go oh, ahead, there. Peggy. Oh, there's me. Okay. Well, hello. I'm Peggy Dobbins. I'm in Atlanta. Thanks, Peggy. Um, Robin? <laughs> yeah, Robin Lloyd. I can't hear a thing. Robin Lloyd, Burlington, Vermont, Wilf, and member of Disarm Committee, and also DEI with uh, George. Good. Um, Joan? This is really weird. I don't know why I can't. Hi. Hi. Uh, Joan Goddard from the San Jose, California, with a uh, branch of Wilf, which is in the San Francisco Bay Area. Looking forward to learning a lot thanks okay um genia billingsley talk to me hi i'm gina billingsley i'm in the atlanta i'm in the atlanta area and i've worked with peggy on some other projects and she sent me this zoom link and i'm very interested in housing justice oh great hey. my sound seems to be working uh thank you peggy so george would you continue uh, with the check-in so all of the folks can introduce themselves. And we'll probably start with Billy and then go to Dr. Bambi and um, uh, the staff person. Uh, so she'll have to say her name. I don't want to mess it up. And then we'll go with Pat Frey last as the speakers. But has everyone introduced themselves, George? No, we need Julie. Peggy and CC, plus there's a 515 number, and there's um, Miss Hayes Brown assistant, who, as I said, you said, you don't want to mess up her name. 
So Julie. Julie uh, from Boston. Yes. Introduce yourself. Oh, hi. Hi, everyone. Um, I am Julie Kabukani. And I'm from I'm from the Boston branch and recently nominated WILF US representative to the International Advisory Board. Happy to be here and to learn more. And and Julie should say she hails from the DRC, uh, if I remember correctly, the Democratic Republic of Congo. Uh, I am so from the Democratic Republic of Congo originally. Right. I can't get it to do you know how to make the gallery work? Um Peggy, have you introduced yourself yet? No, I'm another Peggy, Peggy Tainer, and I live in the Des Moines area. And I'm uh, just getting interested in this. We're in my book club that I joined. We're reading a book concerning housing. And, and Oh, uh, thank you, Peggy. Now, this appears to be someone else from uh, the Iowa area with a 515 telephone number who's on the phone. Uh, could you introduce yourself quickly? person who's on the phone. Can you hear me? Now, yes. Okay. Um, my, uh, well, I'm Tess Echo, and I'm also with the um, uh, Des Moines Wilf chapter, like Peggy is, and I belong to the same book club, and we're reading Evicted. So this is very apropos. I'm looking forward to, to the uh, discussion. Great. Uh, so C.C. Anderson, uh, another person from Atlanta, along with Peggy Dobbins and uh, uh, Virginia, uh, who introduced herself. So that's good that we have a few people here from Georgia, since we're focusing in on Georgia. So C.C., would you quickly introduce yourself, and then we'll make sure George introduces herself, and then... I didn't hear Joan Goddard if she has introduced herself so that we can move forward with the speakers. Uh, Cece. Good afternoon, good evening. Cece Anderson in Atlanta, uh, personnel chair. Thank you so much, Teresa. Well, thank you, Cece. Uh, who's left? Who have we missed? I introduced myself and Joan did too. I think the only person who's left is um uh Bambi Hayes Brown and her assistant and Billy and uh Miss Frey. They are all the speakers. Uh so we'll start with Billy. Uh so Billy, uh if you could do it in just some time for questions. Uh this is a bit of a webinar, folks. Uh, because we have three speakers, and then we're going to do some Q&A, and then we'll choose the state that will be on for the October month. Uh, but this is going to be quite a bit of information about, at the federal level, what's being done, and the wonderful things that are happening in Georgia at the state level due to Georgia Act. And then I'm so happy to be working with Pat Frey locally uh, on Home for Good. So Billy, you're on. And George is the timer. So she'll let you know when you've been talking five minutes and then she'll give you the two minute warning. Thank you, Billy. Perfect. George, give me the ax if I if I go too long. Um, but thank you all so much for having me. I'm, I'm really excited to be here. My name is Billy Cerullo. Um, I'm actually originally from Boston. So Julie, um, sending love to to my home. Um, and I forget who said this, but I'm also reading Evicted. So we have a lot in common um, in this group. But I am the uh, one of the housing advocacy organizers with uh, the National Low Income Housing Coalition, otherwise known as NLIHC. And um, to give you a little bit more context, essentially what we do at the National Coalition is we have four different regions across the country um, where we sort of carved out a number of states. And then there's one point person, one organizer for each state in the country. 
um, when it comes to NLIHC. And so for me, Georgia is within my region, as is North Carolina, much of the Southeast, um, and then actually all the way up to Illinois and, and Indiana. Um, so I'm, I'm happy to be here and to share a little bit more about our coalition, what we do on a national level, federal level, and also how we assist our, our member organizations in states across the country in their work on a state and local level. Um, so this is actually our 50th year uh, as a coalition. Uh, we were founded in Washington, D.C. in 1974. And the mission has essentially been the same since our founding, which is to advocate for uh, low income renters. And so to kind of define that a little bit more, uh, we focus exclusively on renters as opposed to home ownership and home ownership programs. Um, and when we talk about low income, for us, what that means is extremely low income renters and very low income renters, as is defined by the Department of Housing and Urban Development. So what that means is anything less than about 50% AMI is that is our sort of sweet spot. So we're very clear on, on sort of the area that we focus on, the population that we focus on. Um, and I think, you know, a lot of us in this room, unfortunately, know that um, there are very few affordable housing options, uh, fewer and fewer, I would argue, by the day when it comes to being able to rent and especially being able to rent when it comes to, um, you know, coming from a, a low income family or being a low income renter. Uh, certainly the case in our nation's capital. I, I live now in Washington, D.C. Um, I've been here for 11 years and I, I can attest to the fact that the rent is getting more and more out of control. And I, I'm sure folks in metropolitan areas, I heard Atlanta, obviously Boston, I'm sure you all can relate as well. So what we do on a national level is push for um, legislation federally to increase the supply of affordable housing units across the country, um, but also to bolster tenant protections uh, and protections that renters have to organize and to advocate on their own um, within their buildings for their rights. And so I'm going to post a link in the chat um, to what is essentially our perennial policy campaign, which is our housed campaign. And there are four pillars as a part of that campaign um, being, and I'm sort of oversimplifying it, but being uh, increased funding on a national level for the National Housing Trust Fund, uh, increased funding for emergency rental assistance, uh, universal uh, voucher programs and increasing the vouchers that uh, that exist now and expanding that program. And then last but not least, uh, tenant protections across the country. And so digging a little deeper into that, one of the areas that we've really focused on recently, um, and th this is something that we're continuing to dig into, and we just had a meeting what, about two hours-ish ago? And Dr. Bambi and Xin Wan were, were both in that meeting. So it, this is a topic we're talking about a lot, is around tenant protections. And we have um, that we released in partnership with two other national organizations, what we call our National Tenant Bill of Rights. So what that is, is it's a culmination of about two years of work um, with the Tenant Union Federation and the National Housing Law Project to put together what we feel is a comprehensive bill of rights for tenants across the country. Um, and it includes things like, um, you know, in terms of tenant protections, uh, language around just cause eviction, habitability standards, which I know is something that is, uh, is top of mind, I would assume, in, in Georgia, um, uh, the right to cure, the right to organize, freedom from retaliation. Um, so I'm gonna post in the chat the link, and apologies in advance for posting multiple links, but I'm posting the link to the final and full uh, Bill of Rights that you can read. It's about 50 pages, but I can also post the link to the summary, which is a lot easier to read. Um, I've got five minutes. Great. Um, so I'll post that as well in the chat so you can read the more condensed version. Um, I'm a geek and I like to read. So when it comes to the full version, that's usually where I like to start. But I'll post that into the chat um, so you all can see that. And what we're doing right now is really pushing that on a federal level. And what that looks like at the moment is getting as many individuals and organizations and even elected officials as possible 
to endorse this Bill of Rights, um, to bolster our efforts on a national level, to push this in the next Congress, to get tenant protections passed on a federal level. So I posted those two links in the chat um, to read through the Bill of Rights. I'm also happy to post the link to officially endorse it and to say that you as individuals, you as a coalition, respect, you know, respect organizations that you work with, um, that you endorse this Bill of Rights and you wanna see it passed on a federal level and you also wanna see it passed on a state level and a local level. The last thing that I'll say before I, I get the ax, the last thing that I'll say about what we do is we also have a very robust uh, policy team and also a robust research team. Our policy team will track federal legislation. Um, we'll meet with legislators. We'll meet with members of the cabinet to get a sense of what's going on on the federal level when it relates to affordable housing. And on the research side, um, we have a research team that puts out multiple reports throughout the year. The two that I will uh, flag, just because they are our two annual reports, are our GAP report and our out-of-reach report. Our GAP report focuses on the gap in affordable housing, so how many units are available, how many are affordable, how many are affordable and available. Um, and so I will put the link to that in the chat specifically the link to our state page for the state of Georgia. We have state uh, profiles for every state in the nation. So you can actually look at each of those states in addition to reading the full report. Our out of reach report, which came out um, about a couple months ago, time is flying. Um, that focuses on essentially how wages have stagnated over the last decade, last many decades, and how rent has continued to skyrocket. Similarly, I'm gonna put the link to that in the chat for Georgia. Um, so you can get a sense of the type of information we collect. I know that my time is coming up. I'm happy to take questions. Um, uh, well, Billy, uh, what we'll do is we'll hear all the speakers. Perfect. And if people can make note of their questions, uh, that would be great because we will come back to it. Uh, because I think a little bit more about the Tenants Bill of Rights would probably be of interest since this is a bit of a national a meeting, so the federal level tenants bill of rights and what the chances are for that. So Dr. Bambi, uh, please introduce uh, the staff person. I believe she's the legislative person uh, who has been so instrumental in the wonderful laws uh, that have been passed at the state level and there's more to be done. So if you could kind of focus in on um, what we want and what needs to be done, uh, Dr. Bambi, in terms of state uh, legislation and say a little bit more about Georgia Act and the fact that it is truly a statewide uh, organization. And the wonderful thing is that Georgia Act will celebrate its 10th anniversary on October 9th. And so I will be there and Diana Brown of Albany in the Fannie Lou Hamer branch. She's gonna be there with me when I spoke to her yesterday. So I'm looking forward to the two of us being there. So if you could go ahead, Dr. Bambi. Hello. Yes, good day, everyone. Sorry I was having trouble coming off mute. Uh, please excuse me being uh, off camera. Uh, it has been an extremely long day today. Uh, I am Dr. Bambi Hayes-Brown, Service President and Chief Executive Officer of Georgia Advancing Communities Together, also known as Georgia Act. And I have with me, Ching Wing Jung, who is our Policy and Program Analyst. Georgia Act is a statewide nonprofit, affordable housing and community development membership organization. We're based in Atlanta, but we are truly a statewide organization. We do our work using a four-pronged strategy. ACT Connect is where we connect and convene our members together for networking opportunities that often uh, result in joint ventures or joint projects. We have our ACT Capacity where we help to build capacity for those uh, in the industry of affordable housing and community development with training activities uh, and events such as uh, we're going to have some training sessions at our annual fall conference. 
We also have our ACT engagement uh, where we go out into the community and talk about the bills that were passed, talk about issues, but also listen to those communities and in turn help them develop solutions for equitable, affordable housing and community development. And our most visible piece is our ACT advocacy. And that's where we advocate for affordable housing and equitable community development on the local, state, and federal level. And we are pleased to serve as the Georgia intermediary with the National Low Income Housing Coalition. I also serve on their board of directors and they really help us tremendously with our federal le legislation. As Billy has uh, put two of the major reports in the chat, we use that information when we're talking to legislators and talking to local elected officials on how to advocate for affordable housing, because we could talk all day and I'm, and I'm a very, very skilled at storytelling, uh, telling stories around the state of what's happening on the ground. Uh, but also you have some legislators that like to, like to see those statistics. Uh, so we use those statist statistics in combination with um, telling our legislators about what's going on on the ground and then sometimes we we sit back and we let uh, our members or people who in, in the community who are dealing with lived experience of housing insecurity do the talking. Um, and so we, I am a person with lived experience, housing insecurity, formerly homeless uh, with my two children, my older two children, I was pregnant with my youngest son who will be 11 in a couple of weeks, but he was actually born into homelessness. Um, so if you see some pictures, uh, when I go to D.C. with the National Income Housing Coalition, he's always with me. And so he could probably give this feel just as good as I can. Uh, but I want to talk about two bills uh, of note in Georgia. The first bill is House Bill 346. And that is the anti-retaliatory bill. It was signed into law and went into effect July the 1st, 2019. And that protects renters against retaliation from landlords if they complain to the landlord for unhealthy, if they complain to code enforcement or the health department for unhealthy or unsafe living conditions. And so that bill has been, been in existence for about five years. And we've talked with some of our partners, uh, notably the Housing Justice League that is based in Atlanta, but also doing some uh, work. We're working together to do some statewide housing work around tenants' rights uh, and building tenant coalitions that uh, it's time to do some, uh, uh, some research on how effective that is, because we don't want to just get laws and just have them passed. We need them to be effective. Uh, and so that is something that we'll be looking forward to uh, within, within the uh, not so distant future. And then we also were um, really thrilled to have House Bill 404 passed. That's called the Safe at Home Act. Um, and that finally um, get, brings Georgia in line with all other states <laughs> um, by having a warranty of habitability. So making sure that the homes are decent, safe, sanitary, livable, have heating and cooling. And uh, that is for all residential leases effective July the 1st, 2024 or later. And so it, uh, it, the, the home must be habitable um, at the time of lease up and for the duration of the lease. So one of the things that we have been really stressing to renters is to make sure you get a lease every year. Um, because so oftentimes landlords will say, oh, well, you just keep staying here and, you know, we don't worry about renewing the lease. No, you need to have a written lease, uh, but I'm, I'm getting a little bit off topic, but that's one of the things that is in the, the law. Um, so we want to make sure that people have leases. It also caps security deposits at uh, no more than two months rent. And it also gives a notice and right to cure um, which most of the times, uh, uh, if someone is default on their uh, living arrangements, is due to non-payment of rent. But as Billy stated, because wages are so stagnant, they're, they're so low and rents are going up, 
Uh, and there's still a lot of low wage workers in Georgia, a lot of service industry workers, retail workers who are still getting paid by the week. So they, the renter may need that three days um, to come if they get paid on the Friday and, and the first falls on the Thursday. They need that Friday to uh, come up with the remainder of their rent so it helps them to remain stably housed. And I got my indicator, so I will end with this. Um, we were actually out today with Diana Brown uh, from Southwest Georgia, which I'm a native, proud native of Southwest Georgia. Um, and uh, we actually had a rally uh, that was hosted by the Housing Justice League and uh, several other organizations where we had a rally in front of the United States Department of Housing and Urban Development field office about some conditions that our senior citizens were living in in the city of Albany. It was an ADA compliant, mold, mildew, rats, rodents, you, you name it. Um, and after several years of trying to get some results, um, the rally resulted in um, Ms. Brown and um, Allison Johnson, who's the executive director of the Housing Justice League, being actually invited in to the HUD building to talk with the HUD officials. And uh, now we have a game plan, a plan of action for uh, those uh, senior citizens living in um, Hudson Towers in the city of Albany, Georgia. Uh, so advocacy does work. Um, we're not a housing justice organization at Georgia Act, but we partner with um, various groups around the state that does housing justice, including the Housing Justice League. So uh, thank you so much. And um, I'll hang on for any questions. Uh, Shin Wen, did you have anything? Um, no, uh, thanks, Dr. Bambi. Uh, have spoke almost everything I want to say, and uh, uh, I posted two things on our chat box. The first thing is, uh, as uh, Miss uh, uh, Adams she says, we will have our four conference on October 9th. Uh, I post the, the registration link to the chats. Uh, we welcome everybody to come. Um, um, and the, it, it is also our 10 years anniversary. So welcome everybody to come. And another thing is I post uh, our um, HB 404 work summary, which included uh, the timeline of the HB 404 and uh, the highlights of the uh the bill, which Dr. Bambi have almost uh, covered in her speak, and uh, also the work we did, uh, what Georgia acted for this bill, and also the future work we probably will focus on for the uh, next few years. Um, we do not have uh, our 2025 legislation property right now, but we will work on it. Probably we will have it after conference um, and uh, if you have any questions of policy related problems uh, you're welcome to talk with me and uh, uh, if you're, you're interested about what policy we're working on we're working in the future uh, also welcome you to talk with me um, and um, I think that's all uh, <laughs> and we are open for any questions comments uh, thank you. Well, we'll hear from Pat Frey, uh, who's with uh, Home for Good for United Way, and they take a lot of calls uh, from the unhoused. So I wanted to say about that work because we're part of a bit of a coalition uh, that includes the school district, uh, parents, students, uh, people of faith, people in business uh, who believe it takes a village to raise a child. And that village is really kind of a concrete thing uh, because uh, there are thousands of unhoused children going to school every day in Muskogee County. We found out at a meeting on August 15th. So I know Pat has some action uh, um, uh, things she wanna say about what the work is. Uh, the Home for Good, they're considered the experts in Muskogee County. So she spoke recently at a city council meeting doing a briefing for the mayor and all city council 
members. So I'm so happy that Pat Frey is my friend. So Pat, can you say a little bit more about Home for Good and the work you do? Yes, ma'am. Thank you so much. And I, if you hear my air conditioner in the background, I apologize. I'm sitting outside enjoying the nice weather for a change. You know, it, it, it's, it's wonderful. So I decided to sit outside and, and get a little fresh air. Again, my name is Pat Fright. I work um, at United Way of the Chattahoochee Valley. The department I work in is Home for Good. Um, for um, I've been there since 2016. I was hired as the executive director of Home for Good and the Continuum of Care lead. For those of you who've done federal work, um, you know, the Continuum of Care is a designated agency who not only helps to secure, but monitor and oversee housing funds through the Department of Housing or from the Department of Housing and Urban Development, but also monitors and advises our local uh, state officials on uh, uses and needs in the community. Speaking of needs, we have seen obviously um, a, a an increase like everybody in the country and, and frankly, everybody around the world. We've seen an increase in homelessness over the past several years um, that in my research has sort of been unprecedented in the percentages that it has gone up, excuse me. Um, but also we've seen an increase, and, and yes, Ms. Elamain, you pointed this out, we have seen an increase in the number of families with minor children who are experiencing this. In fact, um, and I'm embarrassed that I don't have the link right with me, but HUD just put out a snapshot of homelessness in the United States and the number of children who are homeless at risk of hope, <coughs> excuse me, allergies, at risk of homelessness or doubled up. The population of those children is over 1.2 million, which is greater than the population of children in 28 states in the United States. I will send you Ms. Elamine the link to that if you'll share it with this group. But those are the kinds of things that, that we started seeing trends back in 16 and 17, <coughs> excuse me, and got some of our providers to change their models from serving single adult males to serving families with children. But the numbers of available housing units and or beds obviously have not kept up. One of the things we embarked on, <coughs> excuse me, as a United Way, um, late last year and early this year, we did ent entered into a contract with Georgia Tech and their economic development agency um, to look at what our true housing needs were, not only in our city proper or county proper, but in an eight county region. Because we know that Columbus is a hub of lots of workers that come in and out. <coughs> but then go into communities outside. So we're doing an eight county housing needs assessment that actually the surveys just wrapped up on the 31st of August. Our partners at Georgia Tech, <laughs> I apologize, Columbus State University and Troy University, I have taken all surveys. They're doing the initial analysis. Once the initial analysis is done, and they start seeing those trends, those common denominators, those common concerns, those common likes and dislikes, we'll start pulling together focus groups mid-October through mid-November to sit down with people in our communities, again, in an eight-county region, two counties in, in Alabama, six counties in Georgia, to look at that those surveys, to look at that common data, to do some hard drill downs, to look at what we're looking for in 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 in, in the way of, of of housing, we're looking at affordable housing, or depending on the the audience you're with, excuse <coughs> me, they may call it workforce housing. We're talking um, starter homes. We're talking everything in between. We're talking about infill in our in our communities, in those properties, in those neighborhoods that have lots that are empty, that are vacant, or those houses that are being, that, that are on the condemnation list, that are gonna to be torn down. 
What do we do with that land? Do we, <coughs> excuse me, do we sell it off just to the highest bidder? Or do we look at it from a community development perspective? And do we look at how we can take that what was then at the time of development a um a, a, a lot that could have been a single family dwelling and maybe turn it into a modern duplex or a modern triplex. So now we're meeting the needs of three households versus one on the same size lot, thus leaving people and allowing people to stay in their community at an affordable rate and then revitalizing the community. That's just one part of it. In my little community here in Columbus, we're we're in the poorest zip code in the state of Georgia. And we've just developed the, a, a, a neighborhood association just last Monday to start dealing with all of the issues, but also looking at it from a prevention perspective. We're looking at making it better for the next two and three generations. It didn't get, take, get here overnight and it won't, it won't be overnight that we fix it. But if we don't start with the little ones and start reaching back to them and pulling them up and being those mentors, we'll never see a change. That's all I have. You're muted, Teresa. Uh, thank you, Pat. Uh, we do have a hard stop at 7.30, uh, but for the benefit of the members of the Women's International League for Peace and Freedom, all who are spread out around the country, uh, the Fannie Lou Hamer Housing Justice Campaign is a multi-year campaign uh, that's taking us into 2028, uh, which is the bicentennial of Columbus. And what I've been talking, Pat, with the city manager and the mayor about is reparations uh, with the housing focus that will take in uh, the issue of poverty in addition uh, to the reparations uh, for descendants of enslaved Africans uh, because Columbus founded in 1828 as a slaveholding uh, municipality. So, um, We'll talk more about this in upcoming meetings, but how do we get reparations for the fact that Columbus is unbelievable, the undeveloped land. Raleigh, North Carolina and lots of cities ran out of land years ago, but Columbus has so much undeveloped land and it's residential to commercial. So Columbus is a draw for all the surrounding counties, Alabama and Georgia, because this is a shopping and dining paradise. You can shop and dine all day long here. And I could go to 14 new restaurants uh, uh, that I haven't been to yet because that's what's happening here. This is a uh, support for the business community and not for the poor and the unhoused. And the housing numbers are growing. And as Pat said, and I said, it's children. That is just unacceptable. So let's open it up for questions uh, to Pat, Billy, and Dr. Bambi uh, for folks who are uh, from out of town, out of Georgia, and CC. Uh, with the Metro Atlanta branch, we have two branches of Wilf in Georgia. Uh, so the Metro Atlanta branch is kind of key uh, because when we do our state house stuff, because the enforcement of these new laws, as Bambi pointed out, even though a law has been on the book for five years, the enforcement is a problem. And, and it's gonna be hard to enforce on the slum laws if we don't go after them when they start evicting people. And I did give Pat uh, the list of the 2,945 dispossessories uh, that were filed from January to June of this year, because last year, 1,000, 
358 folks were evicted. So eviction is a real problem. So people who get evicted, uh, we need to get to them and find out what their problems were if they're arguing with their landlord and they didn't pay the rent and the landlord evicted them uh, because of really the landlord is a slumlord. So these are the kinds of things we need to talk about in terms of enforcement at the local level here, Pat, uh, in addition uh, to what um, Georgia Act is doing statewide. Uh, so uh, who's raising their hand? Anyone? Oh, Georgia from Tucson. Thank you. Um, rent control has not been mentioned. So you're just completely, that it's all about funding on the federal level, state, what is it? Uh, funding, not rent control, right? No rent control. Not necessarily. I'm assuming that's directed to me because it was federal, but no, not necessarily. I would say, so we have a lot of different campaigns, um, not just our housed campaign, which predominantly focuses on housing, beefing up, uh, sorry, beefing up funding for the federal housing programs. And we're talking about National Housing Trust Fund, uh, vouchers, things like that. However, there are plenty of bills that we support that are not necessarily directly tied to those four pillars. Um, one thing that I would recommend is if you go onto our website, and I can post that link in the chat, but if you go onto our website, we have a weekly, we really have actually have two different weekly memos that go out to our members that are really helpful when it comes to sort of tracking federal legislation that we're supporting. Um, like, for example, I know one piece of legislation that we're supporting that has a lot of moving pieces to it um, is the Green New Deal for affordable housing, just as an example. So no, it, we're not tied only to those four pillars. It's it's more expansive than that. Well, Georgia, that's a really important question. Uh, Georgia has kind of outlawed a uh, rent control. I lived in the Boston area uh, when there was statewide rent control. And I, rem I remember when that bit the dust in the mid 90s. And maybe Julie can speak to this if she knows. Uh, but I heard that the new mayor of Boston is trying to bring back rent control for the city of Boston. Uh, and I know there's been some noise about rent control for seniors. So I think different municipalities are open to the idea of rent control for certain populations. Like here in this military town, rent control for veterans, especially disabled veterans. Uh, but rent control for seniors seems really good because that's a rising number of unhoused, you know, black women, seniors, families. That's who's becoming unhoused. So thanks for that question, Georgia. Uh, Pat, did you want to add something? I saw you write something in the chat, did you, Pat? Um, I wrote yes. something. Yeah, and, okay. and I did too. I was just asking, make sure that we all get a copy of the chat because I want to look at B Billy's Gap report. Yeah, George always saves the chat and she sends it out with the recording uh, to all of us. We love George. She is the queen of tech. And so she takes care of uh, our working group meetings to make sure we all get a record of the meeting and it's being recorded. Uh, so who, who wants to say something uh, before I put George on the spot and say that for our October meeting, we want to spotlight North Carolina. So George, you might want to get up with Billy uh, so that, um, uh, this relationship with uh, the National Low Income Housing Coalition is really key because there are two partners in North Carolina with the National Low Income Housing Coalition. We have one partner in Georgia, which is Georgia Act, and I'm very glad to say the Southern Anti-Racism Network is a member of Georgia Act and the Fannie Lou Hamer branch housing justice campaign, which is what I was talking to Diana Brown about, 
she did tell me about the HUD action today. Uh, and so I'm gonna be meeting with her on September 14th uh, because we're in the same congressional district uh, with Sanford Bishop, Albany, Georgia, and Columbus, Muskogee. So that's, these are the ways we're making the connection uh, between WILF, the Southern Anti-Racism Network, and other stakeholders uh, in the region. Uh, so anyone else? <laughs> well, see. Um, oh, I'm sorry. I was just going to mention about um, rent control in Georgia. There is a state law that preempts Georgia from enacting rent control. Uh, we did have rent control in the past. Um, but we don't now, but that has been something that has been on a lot of advocates radar in the state. Um, the pushback that I'm hearing from some landlords is that um, the rate of quote unquote, I'm using air quotes, uh, repairs um, and deferred maintenance um, out uh, surpasses any type of rent increase. So that's that's the quote unquote argument that they use. Uh, so, you know, it's just sometimes it's kind of good to know what the other side is thinking. So that helps us know how to strategize. Well, the other thing is that we know we've been overrun with investors like many other states. Uh, I live in a neighborhood uh, that used to be a historic black neighborhood. And most of these homes now are owned by investors. And one of the things I want to talk with Pat more about are the friendly landlords, because Pat saw my one page lease compared to the corporate lease. I jumped out of that frying pan, which was 52 pages long. So these are the things that we're looking at in terms of a renter's bill of right locally. How can we cut down on the number of pages in a lease? Because it's like the landlord has all the rights and you have none. They said, look at page 44. You're not supposed to talk about us on social media. That's the kind of nonsense we're dealing with here with the investors. So we want to do what my good landlord because the rent here is very low compared to what's happening in the corporate world. A uh, three bedroom, one and a half bath uh, for a little over a thousand a month. I was paying over 1400 for a two bedroom apartment with investors. So we have to find the friendly landlord because my landlord owns quite a bit of homes. And so, you know, I've been talking to him about, you know, how uh, uh, he could get people in his houses uh, that are good people because he's not trying to gouge people. And that's what we have to look for. It took me a while to find this house, but it was important to do. Uh, well, Julie, uh, are you there? Do you know anything about the Boston uh, rent control that I've been hearing about? from the new mayor. Julie, have you heard anything? Yes, I can hear you. Well, we haven't heard anything yet. So the rent um, control bill has not passed as to now. I, I know there are many efforts by several senators to try and pass a bill, but it hasn't. Last time I heard of it was in 2023. So. There is not much um, effort so far. I know I don't know if Billy knows something else. I well, I wish as a Boston native, Boston is outside of my region, so I'm a little less. If I know anything, it's just from listening to my parents and my grandparents. But in terms of having a deep understanding of what's going on in terms of housing, um, a little less so. But to Dr. Bambi's point, I think a lot of, especially when we're talking about rent control, I think a lot of it comes down to state governments and municipal governments. Um, yeah, I know the last time it happened, it was in 1994. That, that's when, you know, they basically they eliminated it. And since then, I mean, 
nothing is happening. Yeah, I was uh I was doing I lived in Rhode Island in 94 and I worked in Boston. So I had a sublet from a friend. Uh she was paying 350 a month. It was a third floor walk up in Cambridge and she had five rooms. Uh and when rent control bit the dust that apartment went up to twelve hundred dollars. I know. Yeah. Yeah. And so I remember that awful thing. People were scrambling like crazy. We couldn't believe it. It was the beginning of it was like an Armageddon uh, when rent control went down uh, and everybody was fighting as hard. But the real estate folks, that's who's in control of this. And so, uh, well, thank you. We do have our hard stop at 730. And so, George, can we get the confirmation uh, that we can focus in on North Carolina when we meet the first Wednesday in October? Sure, October 2nd. We got it. Wonderful. Wonderful. Uh, well, that's when our next housing uh, uh, justice working group meeting of the Women's International League for Peace and Freedom will take place. And probably around mid-October, uh, uh, Pat, we're going to get back together with building a village uh, and, and, and just see where we are uh, with um, the crisis in the school district with the unhoused and with your survey. So the data may be out by then. Okay, great. Well, thanks everyone for joining us. Uh, and George will send the recording and the chat. Certainly. And the captions. Thank you so much. Good night. Thanks, Thank everyone. you. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.